Yeah, so there's, I wanted to talk about a paper. Here it is. It's called The Symmetry and Simplicity of the Laws of Physics and the Higgs boson, which isn't a, a particularly catchy title. What, what Maldacena's done, and Maldacena is a big shot, right? Maldacena generally doesn't do this sort of thing, which is, you know, talking about, it's almost like an outreach paper. He's describing the, you know, the fundamental laws of physics, as in gauge symmetry, uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking, the way the Higgs works. Uh, and he's done it using an analogy of economics. So what, what's his uh, economic analogy then for, to describe all this, to understand really fundamental physics, the standard model, just from economics? Uh, that's almost belittling economics, isn't it? <laughs> it's, uh, it it's, it's really simple. What, what Mel de Sena, uh, starts with, he starts by trying to explain gauge symmetry. And he talks about three, you know, a bunch of countries. So I want you to imagine three countries. So one can be the UK, maybe the US, Brady, you want me to make the other one Australia, don't you? But I'm not going to. I'm going to make it Spain because I'm half Spanish. Okay, so you've done excellent, uh, <laughs> excellent maps there of the country. Yeah, they are, they are, and they're, they're sort of nicely placed, actually, aren't they? I, 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 I can't even be orientated, right? I don't think. Yeah. Anyway, but and then so you've got these three countries, and uh, I want you to imagine bridges between the countries, and on each bridge there is a bank. Now, each bank. Can you know set an exchange rate between the currencies as you cross the you know cross between the two countries? Are you going to draw little banks? You can, do you want me to draw a little bank? Yeah. Okay, let's draw a little banks. bank. Little I put bank on it. Yeah. Do I have to draw three banks? Do it. Everyone. Yeah. Okay. I know. Let's move. I'll put bank on this one because it's it's going to Spain, isn't it? Right. This one will call bank as well. Right. Okay. So there's these banks. There's banks on every bridge. You can change money at these banks. Now the banks set the exchange rate. They don't make money, they're not, they're, not, they're not in it to make money, so the exchange rate works the same both ways. So for example, um, on the, at the UK-US border, you've got um, maybe one pound to say, let's say three dollars, quite a generous exchange rate. There's no, they don't charge any commission either. Okay. So and as, as, just to emphasise, if you, if you went with a pound that way, you'd get three dollars, and if you came, went with three dollars this way, you'd get a pound back. There's no money making by the banks here. Here, you know, maybe one pound, to two euros, okay, and here we've got say, let's say a dollar to a euro. So just for simplicity, let's just start off with this scenario. Now you can ask yourself, can I make money? So you think of a speculator, can a speculator make money? And, uh, and you can e e immediately see that you can, right, just by going around, going, you know, going around the countries in the right order. So for example, you start with two euros here in Spain, you go to England, it turns into a pound, you then go to America, it turns into three dollars, and then you come back to Spain again, and it's now three euros, so you've made a euro. Okay, so you can see, so, so what you imagine is there are speculators, and then they go around, and in this case, they want to go around in that direction. So this, in a way, what, what, what uh, Maldacena says this is like, says the speculators are like electrons, or charged particles, and they're going around in this sort of, the electromagnetic field which is set up by the banks through their exchange rates. Okay, so the exchange rates set up the electromagnetic field and the electron, or the speculators, move around in it. So this explains this process. And of course, if I change the exchange rates, it changes how the, electron, the, the, the speculators will move. Okay, so they might go in a different direction. They may not move at all. If I made it so that, um, so that all exchange rates were one-to-one, -one, okay, there's going to be no movement as speculators. So th this is sort of explains the, the you know, uh, uh, electrodynamics. The, the, the nice thing about it as well is, is, is that Maldacena argues that if um, the banks don't want to run out of money, okay, if I had this set up forever, eventually speculators would go round and round and round and round and eventually the banks would run out of money. So he says the banks don't want to do that. So what they do is they can change their exchange rates so that they, to protect themselves from this. And if you work out this actual, the equations that govern that, it turns out that they're the same as Maxwell's equations that describe electromagnetism. So it's kind of beautiful, right? So it's, you really do have electromagnetism going on here. Speculators, you've said, are electrons. Yeah. What are the banks? The banks are like the gauge field. They're the, they're the sort of electromagnetic field, if you like, in this scenario. Okay. Or, or it doesn't have to be an electromagnetic field. It can be associated with the, with the uh, weak force, for example. Um, yeah. So what's an example of a transaction where electrons are making money in nature? Well, that's where they're interacting with the uh, electromagnetic field. So that would be precisely that. So they're moving in the electromagnetic field, 
because essentially in this scenario, it's like moving through the banks, you know, in making the, in, money in, along the way. In the analogy, what is money? In the analogy, what? Ah, now that's a good. That's good. We are going to come to that. So, money in a way is a little bit like energy here. At least the money that you gain is a little bit like energy. That's what Maldacena argues. So that's kind of. So in a sense, um, this brings us to. We'll come to that important point in a moment. One more question. In the analogy, what are countries? Points in space, that's important as well. Okay, so each point in space is, is, is a country here. Okay, so you're literally moving around space here. So, but what's an important th aspect of this is that any given country is free to change its currency. Okay, so for example, the guys in America could change, make you know, halve the value of the dollar if they wanted to. And all that would mean is the banks would just change what they meant by a dollar in their exchange rate and it wouldn't change how the speculators moved and how they could make money and it's the same that's gauge symmetry in the in physics the other important aspect of this scenario is that um let's suppose they are all one-to-one -one exchange rates okay so now we know that we're calling this like the vacuum configuration okay because the electrons don't move in this because the speculators don't move there's, there's, there's no the fields don't make anything happen. The banks aren't making anything happen. There's no movement of the of the speculators here. But there is an interesting aspect to this, which is which is important. Let's suppose that all the exchange rates in the moment are now one to one. Okay. So uh, electrons don't want to move around. Can I can I but what can I maintain that situation by changing the exchange rates in one of the banks? So let's suppose that this guy here changes one dollar to two euros. Can I can can I maintain the scenario of, of say no movement of speculators? Well you can because this bank can respond and change it the value of its euro. Okay? So if you double the, the euro the amount you know, the exchange rate of euros here and just double it here, it's still a a no movement situation. You can't make money in this scenario. And that's an important distinction. Okay, that, so what's that saying is it costs no, not, it doesn't cost the banks anything to change the exchange rate. Okay, it's costing, an analogy, it's costing no energy to sort of, to the field here. And this is, this is analogous to a massless particle. So the gauge fields are behaving like massless particles. It costs them no energy to change the exchange rates. Okay, now what happens when you throw the Higgs in? Now, the Higgs doesn't, doesn't we, don't, we don't use the Higgs to, to give mass to the, to the particles in the electromagnetic field. Uh, it's, it's done with the, with the weak force and, uh, and uh, you know, the sort of W and Z bosons, those kinds of things. But you can still think about this kind of scenario. And uh, so what, what is the Higgs? Well, the Higgs is gold. So all exchange rates, are, let's say they're all one to one. No money can be made by speculators in this scenario. But now I add some gold to the game. And let's suppose that there's some, the price of gold in the UK, I have no idea if this is a sensible price. One kilogram is one million pound. Okay. Now, in the US, one kilogram of gold is worth two million dollars. So all the exchange rates are one to one. Can you make money now? Previously you couldn't. Until I introduced the gold, you couldn't make money. Now, you can make money. It's very easy to see how to make money in this scenario. You just start off, you buy some gold in England you, with your million pounds. You've got a million pounds, haven't you, Brady? <laughs> <laughs> okay. right. So you, you buy some gold in England with your million pounds. You then go to um, America. You, you turn that into, you go and sell your gold in America for $2 million. And then you go back to England and it turns into two million pounds. So you made a million quid. Okay. So you can see that suddenly the situation has changed again. Okay, so suddenly this gold has, has changed the picture. There's another thing that you should realize is that in a sense, the, what's important here is the price of gold. You could redefine the currency in any given country so that the price of gold is always one million. Okay, let's suppose, suppose we do that. Okay, so the price of gold is always a million. Ah. So now we're going to redefine the dollar. So a new dollar, okay. Instead of being uh, the new dollar, it's going to be Instead of being $2 million for a kilogram of gold, I might have put a pound sign in front of that. <laughs> uh, instead of being $2 million for a kilogram, it's going to be instead, it's going to be $1 million new dollars. Okay, I put an N in front of it. Okay. Okay. And it's still a million pounds. But now the banks have to respond to that. Okay, so they have to halve the number of dollars in their exchange rates. So it's now one to two. So let me just draw it aside here, probably be easier. So and this is now one to a half 
a half to one, a one to one. Okay. In response to that, the fact that the price of each each country's changed its currency, so the price of gold is always a million. So now you can see you can you know you can see that you can make money through the exchange rate. But suppose you now had a scenario where um, all the exchange rates were one to one. The price of gold is one everywhere, one million everywhere. All the exchange rates are one to one. Now that's a scenario where you can't make money. Price of gold's fixed everywhere as one million. The exchange rates are all one to one. Can't make money in that scenario. Now before um, we said that a bank could change this exchange rate, okay, and other banks could respond, and you could still have a scenario where you can't make money. So there's no cost in no cost to the banks. However, now when the gold comes into play, if one bank wants to change its exchange rate, another bank can't respond to that in such a way as to guarantee there's no money making. Because you could always pass between those two countries for which the first bank changes exchange rate and then you can make money. Carrying gold in your pocket. Carrying gold in your pocket, exactly. So this is now, so, what, so this is fundamentally different. So what's happened? It's now become impossible for the banks to change their exchange rates and maintain the status quo of no money making. It's cost them energy. What this means is, is the, the, this is analogous to the gauge field having gained mass, having gained energy. Okay, it costs them. It costs them to, uh, to change the exchange rate, it now costs them. Okay, just as it costs you to move a massive particle, if you like. It's kind of analogous to that. So this is, this is the standard model in action. This is exactly how it works. So the, adding the gold breaks, you know, essentially gives mass to, these, um, to, these, to this gauge field. It's essentially what it's doing. It's giving mass to the banks. It's making it harder for the banks. So they can't just play around with their exchange rates now in such a way that they can guarantee that the speculators don't make money. That can't happen now. One, one guy changes the exchange rate, then that's it, you can make money. There is one final, final twist to it, is where's, where's the Higgs particle in this story? Okay, so the Higgs particle, to, to see the Higgs particle, of course there's nothing physical in a sense about the precise price of, of gold in any given country, because I could always redefine my currency. Okay, so, so I could always make it one, one, it can be two million dollars, but I can change that to one million new dollars, okay? That's no big deal. However, what you can introduce is, is silver into the game now. And now there is something physical, which is the difference in between the price of gold and silver in a given country. And something like that would be the Higgs particle. What do I take from this about the nature of nature? <laughs> like, it almost seems like mass is bad for nature. Like, like almost like nature wishes mass didn't exist because it ruins this perfect setup they had. That's exactly, I think that's completely right, Brady. The mass requires, the introduction of mass requires, the, uh, you know, breaking a symmetry. Okay, you're breaking that symmetry. This is spontaneous symmetry breaking, okay, that's what we call it. And that's what the Higgs does. It, 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 the sim, there's a symmetry which is spontaneously broken to give mass to the, uh, to the gauge bosons. Um, and you see it here in the bank analogy. You add gold to the game and suddenly the banks don't have this symmetry anymore that they can just play around the exchange rates and it doesn't cost them anything. So is it almost like like mass, us, <laughs> you and me, is sort of this aberration or this thing that this this wart on the backside of nature. Like if you like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, one thing that we know about about nature is that it, you know the symmetries are broken. You know, and and uh, you know, for example, um, you know, supersymmetry that we talk about looking for at the LHC. That that would be great for doing solving some problems like the um, like say the cosmological constant problem. But we can't use it because it's broken in nature, so it's no good to us. Okay, so yeah, actually, put it this way, life would be easier for physicists if um, we could solve all of, all, lots of very difficult problems if, if we had loads of symmetry and we could just, uh, you know, we could just say, oh, this, this value, this thing is zero because it's because of symmetry. So physics um, would be easier if physicists didn't physically exist. Yeah, phys the problem is that physicists wouldn't exist if, if, uh, if these symmetries were, were there. But they could solve the problems. <laughs> the garden and drank tea under the shade of some apple trees. So he's, so he's kind of recalling an anecdote here of him just hanging out with Isaac Newton and what they're talking about. That's right, and then Newton starts remembering the apple tree story. Amidst other discourse, he told me he was just in the same situation as when formerly the notion of gravitation came into his mind.